Are you all ready for a brand new DC update? All right, today's update is mostly going to be factual stuff. So I'm going to show you guys some things here today on all the DC goodness that has been being passed around the internet over the last couple of days. And most of this is actual factual stuff. Uh, there might be a little bit of speculation at the end. I'm going to start talking about the small stuff first, and I'm going to end with the bigger stuff at the end. And just to give you an idea of what I'm going to talk about in this video, I've got the villain of The Flash. I actually have a, a thing I'm going to show here in a minute. Uh, we're going to talk about the Shazam 2 trailer, the Batman Oscar nominations, uh, and, how and then James Gunn, how he's treating the fans. And then we're going to talk about the James Gunn slate that is scheduled to be released this month. And then I'm going to talk about some DC Comics news at the very end. So the first thing I want to talk about here is the Flash villain. We haven't heard a lot, a lot about the villain. There really was never a mention of the villain in the Flash. Everyone assumed it was going to be Dark Flash. And that's exactly what we have. And here's the first official look at the character from the film. Now, honestly, I'm not digging this look. It looks like something out of a CW show. But I'm sure on the big screen, you know, these are toys. We're not getting a good representation of what it's going to look like actually in the film. It may look amazing. And this movie is still getting the highest praise that any film has received for any DC projects in many, many years, probably since uh, Wonder Woman came out. That got quite a bit of praise, and this is probably the next most talked about and most anticipated film by Warner Brothers DC and people who have seen it. So let's talk about Shazam next. You can see David F. Sandberg, the director of Shazam, revealed that a new trailer will drop tomorrow on January 26th. And I will be here to give you my thoughts on the trailer after I watch it tomorrow. And you can see that the movie is coming out on March 17th. This movie is locked, loaded, and ready to go. And there were surprising announcements. Uh, it looks like James Gunn's wife is going to be in this film. Uh, so Harcourt is going to make her way over to the Shazam movie, as well as, ha as, well as having Dr. Savannah make uh, an appearance in the film as well. I find this to be kind of strange. You know, everybody online is calling <laughs> Harcourt, you know, uh, James Gunn's wife and people are getting upset with that but that's exactly who it is and it's always going to be see, seen as nepotism so I had to give my two cents in there in regards to that and all the stuff that is being passed around. So let's talk about the Batman and the Academy Awards nominations that this film received. The first is best makeup and hairstyling and I would have to agree with that. Uh, what they did with Colin Farrell specifically was pretty amazing. I thought the makeup in this film was pretty freaking awesome. One thing I'm shocked about, there's no cinematography award, you know, even nomination on this list, which surprises the crap out of me because if there was anything in this movie that was amazing, was the cinematography. So they're getting best sound, which I don't understand. I don't think there was anything in the movie that I thought was amazing as far as sound goes. And then you have best visual effects. And they were mainly touting the scene at the end when he fell through the skylight into the catwalk. And they thought, you know, people think that's amazing. But just look at the cinematography of the picture they have here. This is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, I, I wish that's the one thing I wish it would have gotten was cin cinematography and makeup. I would agree with both of those. I don't know who the others are in the category. But I do agree that this is what should have been, you know, what they should have been nominated for. So for just a minute here, I want to talk about James Gunn. And this is going to be the majority of the last part of the video. We're going to talk about a couple things in regards to James Gunn. The first thing is that he is being kind of nasty towards fans online, especially the ones who don't, don't like the fact that he fired Henry Cavill. And I don't know what he expects. A lot of people loved Henry Cavill, not just the Snyder fans, but a lot of casual fans and people who have followed these movies <laughs> whether they are following from Snyder, Hamada, or whoever was in charge and have just followed the movies and been faithful, a lot of people are upset that Henry Cavill was let go. And I don't think he's going to hear the end of this. And one thing I've forgotten to mention in my previous videos is I do believe that the first movie that they release in his new slate has got to be an out-of-the-park amazing film, or it's over. It'll be the most important, probably, the most important film that Warner Brothers has ever released. A lot is going to be riding on that film, and everyone does expect it to be 
Superman. And that is going to be critical if they're going to make this work. And if that movie is not all it's going, you know, cracked up to be, then it's over. Uh, I don't think there will be a future for DC until another company comes in and takes it over. But there is more in regards to, in, in, to, in regards to, well, let me, real quick, when he's being nasty to fans, let me talk about what I mean by that. Somebody was using the hashtag of Cavill is Clark. And he came out and made a nasty comment of, you know, it, somebody didn't spell Cavill's name right with an L. Uh, with two L's. They only did one. And he said, you know, if you're going to if you're going to tout and and complain about getting rid of your favorite actor, you might want to know how to spell his name. Well, I've got news for James Gunn. His name doesn't matter because to a lot of people, Henry Cavill is Superman. That's what's more important is that he was Superman for a, a, just a multitude of people and for this generation of fans, he was Superman and we all have hope that maybe he'll come back one day. And I just hope this all, personally, I hope everything blows up with Gunn and that they do restore, you know, what had has been started and they continue. But that's just my two cents. So the last big story I want to talk about here is James Gunn and his DC announcements that are coming this month. He did reiterate that the announcement is coming in January, but it says James Gunn clarified that the DCU announcements will not reveal the entire 8 to 10 year plan, but rather Quote, just a few projects from the first chapter. So here's the article where this comes from. And it says, James Gunn teases how much of DC Studio Slate we will see this month. And it's interesting. Uh, fans uh, of the DC Universe have been waiting to see what new projects James Gunn and Peter Safran have in store since they took over as CEO in DC Studios. It's not clear whether the projects that will be announced include previously reported projects, such as a Superman reboot written by Gunn or a second season of Peacemaker, or if they were or if they will be entirely new movies and television shows for the new or for the HBO Max streaming platform. Gunn has been active in providing information about the franchise on social media, including confirmation that major announcements will be made this month. However, he also clarified that these announcements will not reveal the entire eight to ten year plan but rather just a few projects from the first chapter. And it's interesting that he, that they, that he said chapter. They're not going to look at this as phases because they don't want it to mirror Marvel. Well, I mean, that's what they're doing, so you might as well just call it phases. I'm sorry to say, but if you're just going to take off of the Marvel playbook, that's exactly what you're doing. Changing it to chapters does not change anything. It is what it is. You're ripping off what Marvel has done. Uh, Zack Snyder was never going to do that. He was doing his own thing, and the studio just blew it all up. So they're going to have to live in the bed that they've created. And here's the interesting thing. Uh, this is the actual tweet that this came from. Somebody asked, James Gunn, sir, please tell us, when will you an or he mean, when you will announce the DCU 8 to 10 year slate projects? He responded with, I'm not announcing the 8 to 10 year slate, just a few projects from the first chapter. So this is interesting. Just the first chapter, only a few projects. A few usually means two. So what are they going to announce? They they made this seem like this was going to be a big announcement coming up. Uh, James Gunn has been adamant about that, that there was a big announcement coming, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be that big. It's only going to be a few movies and probably the Superman movie and, and something else. I don't know what they are going to announce, but we're not getting much of anything with this announcement. So I don't expect it to be this big presentation. It's probably going to be some tweet that he does to announce this, and maybe there might be a little bit of media coverage on it, but I don't think it's going to be any big, you know, aha moment or big presentation that's going to happen. I Maybe I'm wrong, but that's what he indicates when he says a few projects from the first chapter, which means we're not going to even get the whole slate of the first chapter. So it looks like they're going to be calling these chapters, which is interesting. And we're going to see where this leads in the future. So everything I've talked about up until this point, you know, other than the few things I added in of my own personal feelings, all factual stuff that has been, you know, kind of floating around. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about today is what's going on with the comic books. And they did announce, you know, they have the whole new dawn of the DCU going on right now. And I'm going to show you an interesting story about something that is going to be happening and was just announced today.
So Tom Taylor came out on Twitter and said a big announcement was coming today. And you can see seven hours ago, he announced that the Justice League has been disbanded. It is time for a new premier superhero team in DC Comics. Excited to announce I'm teaming up with my friend, one of the greatest artists on the planet, Nicola Scott Art on Titans, Dawn of DC. So it's interesting. They are not bringing back the Justice League. It has been disbanded. They are not coming back. I think that is ridiculous uh, that, you know, they're pushing away from their fan base with their main characters and going with some offshoot characters. And I'm not saying don't have Titans, but you're still ignoring your main fan base. And I I have a feeling that this Dawn of the DC is, again, going to be another big kind of bomb. Uh, most of these events recently have not been all that great with DC, and I don't see them getting any better. So now I'm going to get on my soapbox here for a minute because of something I saw on social media yesterday. DC Comics actually shared a superhero moment, and they actually had a moment from the Justice League, not the theatrical version, not Zack Snyder's Justice League, a whole scene that was in the Justice League version of Justice League, where the Flash was talking with Batman about saving one person. And, oh, you should have seen the comments in this post. Nobody was happy with this. And it's interesting that they're peddling something they know the main, you know, the the biggest group doesn't even... Zack Snyder's Justice League was far superior to the theatrical version. I've never seen one person that said the theatrical version was better. Now, you can argue which one they want to make canon. I think it's pretty clear at this point they're going to go with Justice League, which I think is an abomination. Uh, But, man, how tone-deaf does a company have to be to turn away from their fan base? They're not doing Justice League comics. They are touting the the theatrical version of Justice League. It's like, how, how can you not see that this is not what the fans liked, what the fans want, or are looking forward to? I just do not understand how this company still seems to be tone deaf. And it's no longer just Warner Brothers Discovery. It's DC Comics as well. DC Comics is now all of a sudden all about identity politics and has been for the last couple of years. And it's getting quite annoying. Uh, They need to move away from that and start telling good stories. Quit dealing with identity politics every time you turn around in every comic. So it's, it's very angering as a fan. It's just annoying. Move on. Start telling good stories with these characters. I don't think it's hard to understand that the stories are going to carry this. Uh, you know, I just got done reading Fear State. I've been behind on Batman comics, and I'm getting caught up, and I just finished Fear State. And oh my gosh, it was, it was garbage. That story, it was just a chore to even get through it. Now, the follow-up story after that has to do with Lex Luthor and uh, Batman Inc. around the world. And I've found I've got one more issue to read in that story, and I think that is way more engaging than anything they've done over the last couple of years. I like how they portray Batman and some of the things he dealt with in that story. So, you know, that's what you need to do is tell good stories. You, You don't need to cater to identity politics. It's ridiculous. It's what's causing so much stuff to fail all over the place. All right, so there's my update for the day. If any more DC news comes out over the next couple of days, I will be covering all of it. I do appreciate it, and we will see you on the next video.